Cause I just put the link on the 6.2 web tech and let's just run jumping right. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my folder where I keep doing all my practice, all my assignments, which is called CD core. Um, in here in core, again, I have a folder called unit one. I'm gonna go to unit one and I know that I have in unit one, I have week one, week two, week three. So this was strings, um, so I'm gonna go to week two because the strings was in week two. And then I'm gonna see here, we have three folders, conditional loops and strings. I'm gonna do into strings. And then here's where I did all my exercises regarding strings. So since we're gonna kind of revisit some of the um, string ex exercises, I'm gonna create a full uh, file called string, uh, let's see, lab, lab review maybe. That JS, I'm gonna open that in Atom. Video. And we're gonna do number six. Okay, let me quit this. Um, so I'm gonna, the first thing that the question asked was to copy this, paste it as a comment. Oh, it's kind of long, so I'm going to break it down into multiple lines. Okay, so create a verbing block, a verbing code block. Um, and then it gives us some examples. And let's copy this too. Okay. Um, and I think some of the confusion in this uh, example might come from something like verbing, parentheses, and then uh, a, a verb go, right? Uh, we haven't seen what that is yet or how to create our own. Uh, for, but for this exercise, what we really wanted is a, co a code block, uh, the way, um, the kind that we have been writing here, which is just a few lines of code um, that we kind of name verbing, but we're not, that's just for us to kind of reference it, um, but we're not creating anything called verbing uh, formally. So, okay, so who can help me with this? So let's say I have my, I'm gonna do let verb. I'm gonna create something. Uh, this is gonna be equal to walk. And then what should, even before we write any code, what should uh, the result of this code block that we're about to write give us? Walking, I heard Renee say. Um, let's just do this. Should return walking or console log walking? Okay. How we get? How can we get to that? Um, let's see. Some of the people had had that had difficulty getting to this. Uh, whatever some of the stuff that they tried, Giant. Okay. Okay. Less than three. Console log. Just verb or unchanged. Okay. Maybe besides that, let's just console log the word, the verb. So for this, if our if our verb was go, we should have our code run, right? So let's go. Okay, any other cases that we wanna handle here? Let's see. Um, Kathy, do you, do you have some struggle with this one? 
Okay. Uh, can you give us a hint as to what we want to check next? First, we check for the length. If it's less than three, then just console login and change. We did that. Stephanie? So wait, that will be another if statement here? Yes. Okay. Oh, I my you you put it before? So I guess like let's I feel like some of the confusion that we're having is yeah. Uh, where? Oh, just so that it displays nicely here on change. Mm -hmm. So I think some of the confusion is coming from breaking down the problem. Um, so let's see, how could we... So there are three basic conditions. One is the verb already ends in ing, in which case we want to... Thank you, JR. Uh, in which case we want to change... Um, we just want to add li to the end. So that's our first case. Let's just state it here. First case, verb already ends in ing, in which, okay, yeah, then this could, you could do something, then append li at the end. So, okay, so that's our first case. What's another case? Adding the ing, ing, okay. So when do we add the ing? Okay. Greater than three. And we already know that it has to be greater than three and not end in ing, right? So let's just take note of that. Okay, so if, if it's that, then we add the ing, right? Append ing at the end. Okay, do we have any other cases? Douglas? Uh, the one where it's, it's less than three. Okay. Okay, so if the verb that length is less than three, um, console log verb on change. Right? Do we all agree that these are the three basic cases? Okay. So now, once that we wrote it in words first, now we can jump into the code um, and try to write them in proper JavaScript. So, okay, so the first case, very already ends in ing. So how can we check for that? Any ideas? Renee? Yeah. Ends with? Cool, so you found, Renee found, by looking at W3Schools, the strings reference, which I have, I think I have linked um, in the lesson. If not, uh, you can just Google W3School JavaScript string reference. She found that uh, strings have a method called ends with, I believe, at the top. Ends with, right? So let's read what this gives us. Check if a string ends with the universe. And then it says, string, hello world, welcome to the universe. And then n is equal to string that ends with universe. Um, and let's see, definition and usage. If ends the ends with method determines whether a string ends with the characters of a specified string. 
The method returns true if the string ends with the characters, false if not. Okay, this seems like a very um, feasible way in which we could test. Let's see. Um, Renee, how would I use that? Maybe an if statement? Uh huh. Um, ing. Ing. Backticks. Okay. Okay, let's try this. Um, let's see, walk into the program. Walkingly, okay, we get that. Out here, why didn't I have to do triple equal here? Triple equal true. What happens if I do? Oh, no, no, no. Still works. Right? So the reason why you don't have to do triple equals true here is because if statement uh, will evaluate the expression within the parentheses, and if that returns to, if that resolves to a Boolean or a truthy value, then it's going to run the code block. So in here, where ends with will either uh, return true or false. So it is as, as if true or false was being plugged in here. Um, and then if it's true, we run the code block. Otherwise, we don't do anything so far. So in here, this is one instance where I can choose to leave um, the triple equal true um, out. Because let's see what let's see what this gives us. Console log. Okay. We're gonna see what this gives us. So verb that ends with ing. The verb is walking. So let's see. True. So verb that at, that ends with ing gives us either true or false, whether that string ends with that set of characters. Therefore, in the if statement, we could just use it. Um, because it's, you don't use it because it's going to be true or false anyway. So right. Uh-huh. This already it will evaluate to a Boolean. So anything that evaluates to a Boolean, you don't need to You don't need to do triple equal true or triple equal false. That's correct. Uh -huh. So if you're in that, you can still do it triple equal true until until this feels until this feels more natural. Where you do oh this is gonna return you true or false. If it's true, then run the code block. Otherwise, uh, skip it. Okay, I'm I'm gonna leave this one here for reference. So, okay, so if ends with ing, then do that. Let's see if I do just walk. What is going to give us? Oh, it's not, not running anything, right? Because, well, we only have one if statement, and our verb um, correctly doesn't end with ing already. Okay, so let's go on to the second case. The verb length is greater than three and doesn't end oh, wait, what is doesn't end already in ing. So what could we use for that? How do we make sure that it doesn't 
um, doesn't already end with ing. Right, we, we have that here. So one way is we could do else if, yeah, Pearl? Um, we would have to do a greater than, right? Um, right. Greater than and also add an e somehow. That's correct. So that's going to look like this. Verb out length is greater than three. And I could say and verb or rather not verb that ends with. Actually, let me see if I can do this better in this way. Okay. Yeah, Pro? Okay, so sometimes I'll get the concept, but um, some wording is bad. Yeah, just practice until the wording gets. Do you mean like here, like I'll not? Know, I'll know that it's greater than three. Like Yeah, like coming up with this and, and then not verb ends it with. Yeah, that that just comes with practice. Okay, so if if that, then. What do we do? Append ing at the end. So we could do console.lar and using backticks, which is, uh, what's, what is this call again? Interpolation, right? Um, and this, a string with a backticks is called a string, wait, what is it called? String literal? No, a string template, I think. Yeah, okay. string literal string templates. Right, template, a template literal, that's what it's called. A template literal, a strings literals allowing, allowing embedded expressions. You can use multi-line strings and strings interpolation features with them. They, they were called template strings in prior editions of ES 2015. So those are called template literals. Uh, because they allow me to, as it says here, embed uh, JavaScript expressions in strings. So what that means is when I go here, I could do, this is a regular string, but I could do dollar sign um, curly braces and then put a JavaScript expression here, which in this case is verb. Um, and I want to add the ing at the end, so I don't have to use a plus sign. This is another way in which I could do it. This, so just so that we have the reference, this and um, this should give us the same thing. These two lines should yield the same result. In fact, let's see it. Any questions so far here? Okay, so let's try to run this. Yeah, Pearl. Um, so you're allowed to do not verb ends with, can you do the not in front of anything then? In front of any Boolean expression, yes. In front of any Boolean expression? Yes. Or, yeah, I guess in, in front of anything of any value. Okay, so let's run this. Oh, unexpected token. Unexpected end of input. 25, 25 here, this one opens here, closes here. Is this one? This one, this one ends, that's that, that's inside here. This is, oh, opens and closes here. This one opens here, closes here. I don't know why am I, does anyone see what I'm missing here? Maybe I didn't save? Oh, I didn't save. <laughs> so always be saving. The most important lesson, always save your 
Cool. So we see that now it's C walking twice. So again, these two lines are doing the same thing, which is appending verb, appending ing to the verb. Okay. The last case is the third case. Verb that length is less than three. Um, console log the verb unchanged. So I could do another else if verb that length is less than three, less or less or equal. No, let's just less. Then console dot log verb. Right. So now let's try with a couple different cases. So we saw that walking, that walk falls onto the second case, right? It doesn't end with ing, it's greater than three, and it doesn't end with ing. We add ing to the end. So we saw that that one is working. Let's try go. So does go ends with ing? False, so it doesn't go here. Goes to the next expression, else if is go greater than three, the length is greater than three, and it doesn't end with ing, false. So it should go to else if verb that length is less than three, then just console log the verb. We should see only go displaying the screen. Right, does that make sense so far? Any questions? So here, who noticed some redundancy that we're having in our code? That's, it's not breaking, I mean, it's still working, but we're kind of asking, we're being redundant and asking kind of the same thing a bunch of times. Yeah, Rene? So last time, you don't Yeah. You're you're down the right path. So I guess just to finalize and solidify that idea, we're already asking if it's greater than three in here, right? So if it's greater than three and the verb doesn't end with ing, then do that, then do ing. Otherwise, we already asked if it was already greater than three, the length. So we don't need to ask again if it's, if it's not greater than three, then we know that it's less than three, right? We don't need to ask that second side of the same question. Is that clear? Cool. Douglas? Um, does the code need to account if something is actually three, like bond? Good question. Let's see what this is going to give us so far. Um, it's not, it doesn't end with ing. It's not greater than three, and it doesn't end with ing. So it seems like it's going to show us just for, right. Does the, does the question mention anything about three, a minimum three? Let's just revise that real quick. If its length is at least three, okay. So that means that, how could we fix our code for doing that? Greater or equal, right? Here. Now let's run. Now it works. Uh, wait, running has another end, right? Okay, uh, that will be kind of a, Special case that will, um, if we were writing, I'm sorry, right? Wait, runningly? That is, if it, it should. That's correct. Yeah. Right. So Michael spotted that this is another redundancy <laughs> because we are already asking if it ends with ing here. So we don't need to ask the second side to the same question. So we could just get rid of this. 
because we already asked if it ended with ing. If it, can, if it comes to the second condition, then we already know that it doesn't end with ing. And this is a lot of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Renee? Uh-huh. That would not work for me. And it wouldn't work unless I put it in the Maybe, maybe. But I don't know why, because it should work. It's like it is the best. You're saying it's the end of that. Right. Maybe it was because maybe the order the order in which I wrote these conditions also matters. So if I have if I have this one as my first condition, then I need to make sure I ask that it doesn't end in ING. So this is a lot of the stuff that we do as programmers, which is asking both sides of the same question. Thinking of both sides of the same question can give you uh, insight into the problem. And also kind of arranging your conditions in a way that allows that avoids repetition, like in this case. Uh -huh. Sometimes, in uh, mostly for really edge cases that uh, you might uh, want to account for, redundancy will be allowed. Or not? Not as, it's not that it's not allowed. It's just that it's not dry and it's not good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, most of the times we can rearrange our conditions so that we eliminate the redundancy. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions before we jump into a race? Yeah, Cam. Bonus question five. Let's see. Uh, a race of hands if you get to this one. Okay, is that is that half plus one? Is that half half plus one? <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm just asking so that if if we should go into that. I feel like um, maybe wait. Raise raise your hand if you got question number five. If you got it correctly, okay. So everybody, everybody else, look at whoever has their hand raised, and then if you have question, go ask them. <laughs> Right, and I'm still gonna be here after if you still have questions on that. I just wanna lose this kind of dance, so uh, I wanna jump right into that so that we can get um, cover as much as possible. Okay, so let's go to loops. So I'm gonna quit this. I'm gonna go back to my terminal. I'm going to go back to home. CD core. Also, I wanted to show you here what what my core folder looks like. I'm gonna do that with tree, so you can have an idea as to what it looks like. So in core, I have a folder unit one, um, and that's about it. Oh, I think right, a folder unit one, and then inside unit one, I have a folder called week one, week two, week three. And then inside week one, for instance, I have a folder value types and operators assignment. That was what we did uh, on week one. Uh, that is a folder that has a file called readme and so on. So this is my recommendations for how you can organize your files. So then reviewing later on, uh, for instance, before the assessment becomes really easy where you can go by a week. Um, Cool. So I just wanted to kind of show you that real quick. Say that again. Will the lab? Oh, the assessment have. They're gonna have some of the questions that we, you have been doing in the lab, yeah, and some other news. But you, like you should still be able to to do them because they're exercising the muscle that we're. That we'll put on here. Okay, 
so I'm gonna go into week three because this is week three. So first unit one, then week three. Then the topic, this is a race. Here I have only one file, the lesson plan. Um, and here I'm gonna create a file called arrays. And here in this file, when I open that with Adam, is where we're gonna be experimenting. Okay, so so arrays in general and in any programming language are good for keeping stuff uh, grouped in lists and order. Um, so before we actually jump into JavaScript arrays, can you give me real world examples of um, stuff in, in real life that you would like to keep uh, a list of it, maybe an order list, and um, you, that they are somehow the same kind or that they're somehow related. Yeah, do this. Right, episodes of a TV show, right? Um, episode one or season one, uh, episode one goes before season two, episode two, right? And we could create a list that uh, allows to store that data in an array. Any other examples? Oh, I have to run for my charger. So let's brainstorm for four minutes as to real world stuff that you mostly keep in lists, order or unordered, um, and are find what that what the thing they share in common is. So let's do that for four minutes. And list them, write them on your files, comments or so on. Like I want you to actually keep track of them.
Okay, um, so give me some examples. Oh, one of them was what Douglas mentioned, TV episodes. Another example? Cubo? Say that again? Groceries? Like the grocery shopping? Okay. Anybody else? A shopping cart? Oh, one nail. Contact list. Owen. Variables. Could you give more context? Right. Um, I think what you're trying to get to is the fact that an array would allow us to, instead of creating a bunch of variables, let's say variable one, two, three, uh, we could just have one that is um, one array that kind of holds all the values for those variables in an array. Does that make sense? Right, we're gonna get to that. Okay, so I really like, for instance, grocery, grocery shopping list. Um, the shopping list, the shopping cart is kind of similar to the grocery shopping list. Um, so let's jump into, yep, a to-do list. Days of week. A to-do list, okay. So now let's jump into how we do that in JavaScript. So. Let's say we want to keep, let's say we're building a to-do list app or an app that will help you remember what you went to the supermarket to buy. Um, if you're like me, you forget that really quickly. Um, so for doing that in JavaScript, we have a special syntax for creating arrays, which is first we still use the same let. Um, and then we use the name. In this case, I'm just going to call it actually. Beef. Instead of doing this in here, let's just write it in code actually. Uh, okay, so let's say we're creating a shopping list in our app. So something we can do is still we need to declare and initialize the variable. I'm gonna call it shopping list. Um, and then I'm gonna use the equal operator to assign a value to my variable. Um, and then I'm gonna use square brackets uh, to tell JavaScript this is going to be an array. Square brackets is what tells JavaScript that what we're, what we're about to type in is an array. So. What are some of the stuff that you put in your shopping list? Strings like eggs. Strings like eggs. Maybe milk. What else? Cheese. Cheese. Right, let's keep it on three for now. Um, now, instead of creating three variables 
um, like let's say eggs, milk, and cheese, I have an array that somehow holds the three of them in one. So now let's, see, let's do the simplest thing that we could do with an array, which is console log. Console.log, shopping list. Um, yep, perfect. It does treat them separately. Right, X is. Right, you can think of it more as um, drawers, like label, label drawers. Okay, so let's try to run this node string snap. Oh, actually, that's not the name. We, I called it arrays, I think. Let's do it less. Right, so node arrays.js, and we have our array console log to the terminal. So, okay, what are some of the things that we noticed? Uh, I think, Shara, you said strings, uh, string like eggs. Why a string? Uh huh. Right, though, I think what the point that Char is trying to make is arrays can hold anything inside. So, or yeah, most anything like a number. Now it's an, now it's an array with three strings and one number. Right, we can see that still displays that. Um, it could hold any other value like a Boolean, let's say true. Let's run our program, node, eggs, milk, cheese, to true, right? But in this case, and this is not something very common that we use, is we try to, we try to have values that have something in common, right? So if we said this was a shopping list, now it kind of doesn't make sense that we have two and true, right? That's not part of a shopping list. You can just be aware that you can mix um, data types in arrays, but oftentimes, uh, nine out of 10, they're all the same kind. They share something in common. In this case, uh, the fact that they're part of a shopping list. Michael, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I would say, what do like, uh, you mean? You want to say, I, I, I want to buy two eggs, right? So. That is a that is a problem that we can solve with another data structure um, called an object, and we're gonna get to that. Something else that I could do is let's say um, I'm developing this app and I'm only allowed to use an array. Um, something that I could use as a developer is I'm gonna ad adopt the convention that the first element is always gonna be the number of the second one. So something I could do is two x I went one of milk, and then I want, uh, let's say, two of cheese. But this is, this is thanks to JavaScript that allows us to mix values. But then I, as, a, as the developer, will need to remember the rule that I set to myself, which is the first will determine the number of the second thing. Right? So I will know that if I want to access the the string of the shopping item that I want, I kind of have to go jump over the one and go directly to milk. Um, and from milk, if I want cheese, I have to jump over the two and go to cheese. But let's go back to this things. Yeah. Right, that is a good point. Pearl said, if you do this, you better put a note or a comment kind of saying what your convention is, what that rule uh, means, because another developer just, will just get confused. Right? That, is a, that is flexibility that a programming language like JavaScript gives us. But again, we have to note, take note of that somewhere so that if another developer comes into work, uh, they can figure out and try to see what we were trying to say. Yeah, Renee?
Right. Um, so Renee is saying I could do something like this, one X, right? This is another convention that I, as a developer, uh, follow. As long as I remember that the first thing in the string is the number, then that'll be fine. The thing is, this gets tricky once I do, I want 20 cheese. Now it's not the first character, it's the first two characters. Um, but then, just without jumping too far ahead, I could use uh, another character as a delimiter, basically. So said, this is the number, this is the value, this is the shopping item. But again, there are other ways that we're going to learn later on, like objects that allows us to be more uh, explicit in the way that we express our ideas in JavaScript. JR? Is an empty array a true theme or a false Good question. Is an empty array a true theme or a false theme? So how can we verify the Boolean implicit value of an array? Yeah, pro. Type of, that's to identify the type. But that's not quite the answer. Michael? Double exclamation mark or double negation. Um, I could do something like node. I'm just going to go into node right now. Um, I'm going to say not, not, empty array. It's a truthy value. So what this is telling us is, do we remember that an empty string is a false value? Right? Since I do this here, an empty string is a false value. But if the if the string has something on it, now it becomes a truthy value. What this is saying is we cannot rely on the same rule for um, arrays because if an array has something on it, still true. So whether it's whether it's empty or has something on it, we were unable to tell just based on the truthy value of the array. And I know this is kind of abstract. We don't have to think too much about it yet. Um, yeah, for, for knowing if, what could we use if we want to know if an array is empty or not? What can we use if, uh, to know if an array is empty? Similar to strings. Yeah, do us. Array dot length, that's correct. So let's try, let me exit out of here. Um, so let's just see that our code still runs. Oh. Still runs. Now, my array is called shopping list. So this was the same, just like in strings, I could do array dot or shopping list dot length. Um, let's run our code. Three, right? What happens if, I'm just gonna comment this. What happens if I have an empty array? What should I see? Brianne. If my array is empty, what should I see once I run my program? A little bit louder? Zero, that's correct. Right? Array doesn't have anything inside. Okay, so so we learned how to create an array and how to put stuff inside. Um, there is this other way that in which we can create an array. It's just not very used, which is let another list equal new array then anything that I want to put inside, eggs. I also want to put milk, and I also want to put cheese. Wait, I'm sorry. Yeah? So when you put an empty array, right? Uh-huh. Let's go back to that. This one? Yeah. Right, so how many elements does the initial array have? This one, three, right? Yeah. 
And then how many does the second array pass? None, right? Right, so we could use the length to, for instance, find the last um, element in the array. Is that what you're saying? Like in strings, we could grab the last letter or the last character of the string if we use the length minus one. Right, oh, I see what you're saying. So, you mean if I do string shopping list at index shopping list that length? Sure. Undefined. So, this is the same as saying shopping list at index zero, right? And and then I, I think I see where the confusion is coming from. Uh huh. Right. Um, in this case, I guess what I what I could show you is the fact that if I do this, even though the array is empty. This line is trying to get access to the first element of the array, right? But the array is empty, so the first element of the array is undefined, right? Because, well, there is no index zero because the array is empty. Yeah, here we go. Uh, when you, we do this, oh wait, I'm confused. No, she was asking if that would be the index. If you forget the index, you have to use the index. Oh, I see. To get the, the element at the index, you need to use the square brackets. Yeah. To get the element, not the index. To get the element at the index, yeah. you use the square brackets, like in this case. Here I'm trying to get the element at index zero, but in this case, there is no, there's not even an index zero, and JavaScript just tells us undefined. Some other languages will complain saying there's nothing in the list, uh, but JavaScript is really flexible in that sense. Okay, so so we we learned two things that you might not have realized that I want to stress, which is similar to strings, arrays have a dot length property. And similar to strings as well, we could grab specific elements by using the square bracket notation, right? So let's just draw an example here to solidify that. I'm going to do shopping list is that, and then I'm going to do let string str equal to ABCD, right? So if I want to console log the first element of the shopping list, I could do shopping list at index zero. If I went out console log the first character of my string, I could do str at index zero. Let's see what this gives us. Eggs and A. Right, does this look similar? I'm sorry. Yeah. The first character, and I'm just doing this to draw the parallel between strings and arrays. They are they have the length property uh, to figure out their length, and they have they are indexable or they're they're indexed. That will be the right word. In the in the way that we could given an index here in zero, we could access the element uh, at that index. How do we feel about this? Thumbs up, middle down. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Can you name a string after the same array? You mean if this string was called shopping list? 
really? Like, let's see what JavaScript says. Identify our shopping list has already been declared. So we cannot use the same variable. We cannot declare the same variable with the same name. Even though they're different things, one will be a string and another one will be an array. OK. Right, so we discussed the, the fact that arrays have properties like strings. They are indexed. And they are and they have a, a length property. So in the same case, actually I'm gonna give you um, I'm gonna give you five minutes to using this example and using this console logs uh, change the value that goes inside the parentheses so that you console log the last character of the string and in the other console log you console log the last element in the array shopping list. Do we feel clear about that? So this console log should be logging in this first console log should be logging in cheese and the second one should log D. Let's take five minutes to do that. Last element of the string and the last element of the array. Without hard coding a number in. Without hard coding a number because, well, I could just count that ABC has four characters, so I could just say string at index four, at index three. Right? We're not doing at index three. Use. Use. Use the string or the array length property. That's where I went. That's one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't even hear it. Cool.
Wait, who need who needs the minute and a half that's left? Okay, nobody needs the minute and a half. That's good. Cool. So, okay, what should I type here? If I want to have the last element of the array and the last character of the array. Malik? One is one. Okay. Let's see that. Oh, good catch. Cheese. Good. What about the what about the other one? You had to you had to do the other one for your string slab. Oh. Yeah. String that slice negative one. Okay. Do we know? Let's see if that gives us what we want. That gives us what we want. Any other ways? Similar to the array one. So this works. But uh, here I'm trying to draw some uh, similarities between strings and arrays. So I'm just going to ignore this one for now. Peter? Uh huh. Right. str square brackets str dot line minus one. Cool. We see cheese and d. Do we all agree that this is that they're somehow similar? That they could access them with the same square brackets. That they have indices that we can go in and retrieve. A unique element or a unique character? Um, sure. Right. So that is a good way to put it. A string is an array of characters. Um, we're going to draw some right after this where they actually differ. Um, but yes, you could think of uh, as an array, a string to be an array of characters, but it wouldn't be. Uh, an array in the JavaScript's uh, strict meaning of the word array. Um, and I think that's actually a, a good segue to uh, see where JavaScript strings di differ from JavaScript arrays. Um, who remembers one of the qualities or one of the properties of JavaScript strings? Yeah, for immutable. What does that mean? Who could, who could yeah. It cannot be changed. Um, anybody else has another definition about immutability or as to what the what that means? Can be modified. Can be modified. Yeah. Right, things cannot be pulled in uh, or pushed in and out. Um, so that's why if I do, so kind of just keeping this. If I do str at index zero, I wanna I kind of wanna replace a with z. And then I want to console log str. Let's get rid of let's get rid of this. I run this. My str did not really change, right? Strings are immutable. But now let's see what happens when I do the same to the array. Now I'm going to do shopping list at index zero. Replace whatever is in index zero with the with the letter Z. Oh, I have to change my console log to shopping list. Now my shopping list instead of eggs has a Z. Right? So that is one. Arrays are mutable. You can go in and change uh, the values of individual elements inside an array. How do we feel about that? Thumbs up, down, middle. Yeah, cool. Um, OK, so they just said we're going to pull stuff out, push in. Um, and actually, those are, um, that is a great segue to learning some array methods that can allow us to do just that. 
add elements, remove elements, and so on. Um, okay, so we have, yep. Yeah. So in this case, we're, I'm not really pulling. I'm not really pulling anything out, or I'm push pushing anything out. I'm kind of just replacing, right? So that's one thing that our, that our arrays allows us to do: replace uh, directly. If I want to add uh, something, I could do is let's say so. This is index zero. This is index one. Index two. So I could do index four, and then kind of add. Even though this array doesn't have an index four, um, we could just say, okay, index four, put the Z at index four. Let's see what this gives us. Let's see if this works. Ooh, that's, that's interesting. I did save. What are we seeing? Uh, single quotes, double quotes, that, we don't care about that difference. Malik, right? You're supposed to add to the third index, not the fourth. So JavaScript sees if we're trying to add to uh, something other than the last index, it just fills in the remaining space with an empty item. Uh, there is not really anything there. It's just empty space. Um, so I could do it four. No, sorry, three, and then we add it to the end, right? But this is inconvenient because I had to remember, oh, if I want to add something else, then it has to be index four, one more of the one that I had. And I don't want to have to remember. Let's see. Now it added it correctly. But here we're kind of hard coding these numbers here. What happens if my array has a thousand elements? And then I have to go in and change my code to be a thousand and one and a thousand and two. So for that, JavaScript has good handy methods. Like um, for this one specifically, for adding to the end, we have that push. And instead of doing equal, I'm going to do push the Z into the array. So. Let's see what this gives us. Still give us the same result that we had earlier, right? This one and this one are the same. So a method in the array called push allows us to add elements to the array. Any questions so far here? Cubo? Could you like um, push something into the beginning of the array? Good question. Could you push something into the beginning of the array? Who can answer that question? I uh, see Brianna with a thumbs up. Yeah? Uh, yeah, with the function. There are other methods. Um, if you read the, the lesson, you'll find them there. OK, so we add up to the end. Push, can I, we can pass multiple items. So let's say I want to add Z. But let's just keep in our shopping list. So cheese, uh, what else do we buy? Wraps, um, Giselle. Somebody else gives me give me something else to buy. Rice. Okay, so now instead of adding one thing, I should be adding two things to the array. Right now, I have wraps and rice. So again, who can explain back what push? Thus, to the entire class. Joanne? It adds another element to the array at the end. That's correct. OK. So now what if I want to remove from the end? Let's say, let's do, let's add wraps, this console log there, uh, and I heard pop, right? So let's try that. And again, methods in strings or arrays, we have to do the curly uh, the parentheses to invoke them, to call them, so that they actually have effect. Um, so I'm going to do 
before. Before, after. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, oh, this is funny. What do we see here? I lost what? I lost an element, right? That's true. Um, but you see how we were seeing the arrays before, like with square brackets and then quotes. Now we're no longer seeing them like that. Now they're just words separated by comma. This is because JavaScript is converting these arrays to strings because it's seeing that I want to I want to concatenate a string with an array, and then JavaScript has to convert one to the other. So in this case, it's converting the array to the string, and that's why it shows like that. So for now, I'm just going to do a separate console log here so that we can actually see it the way that I want to see it. Uh, before and after. Okay, so we do. First, we push wraps to my shopping list. Then I console log the word before, and then we console log the array. After that, I say shopping list dot pop. What is pop going to do? Nice. Remove the last one. And then I console log after, and I console log my shopping list again. Let's see what we have. Before eggs, milk, cheese, wraps. After eggs, milk, and cheese. Yeah, sure. The third to last? Second to last. Um, if you read the lecture notes, you'll find the answer. Cam? Right, it was because I was trying to concatenate a string with an array, and JavaScript has to convert the array to string so that, so that the concatenation makes sense. Right, in this case, we're console logging the array in its literal form with square brackets and single quotes. If we try to concatenate an array with a string, um, we get that the array gets converted to a string, all the elements get se separated by commas, and we lose the quotes and the square brackets. How could how could we make it behave? Oh, I did. Uh, I concatenated this string before plus the array. Uh huh. Okay, so now to Hubel's point, there are, these two are operating at the end of the array. We're pushing to the end. We're popping from the end. But what if we want it in? from the beginning, pop and add to the beginning. For those, we have push, no, sorry, shift and unshift. And we're gonna, let's see if we should leave this here. Actually, yeah, let's just leave this here. I'm going to, let's, let's add to the beginning first. Let's do, to add to the beginning, we use shift, unshift. We do shopping list dot unshift. Uh, let's say we want to do this because there is one item that our moms told us not to forget. So it should be at the top of the list. What would be that item? 
water, right? <laughs> we can't live without water, so that makes sense. Oh, wait. Water. Let's see. Let's console our shopping list here. I'm going to remove this. Let's see what we get. No arrays such as water is now at the beginning. Right? Any questions so far? So, unshift adds to the beginning. Now, let's say I realize we have water at home, so I don't really need to buy it. How do I remove from the beginning? Right, shift. So we do shop list dot shift, and then let's console org right after this. Let's run, now the race. Any thoughts, comments, questions? Who has noted something about push versus pop and unshift versus shift? What are some of the differences besides what they do? Maybe what they look like. I'll say, say that a little bit louder. Right, so shift removes at the beginning, pop removes at the end. So what else? What other differences we see between, let's say, that push and then that pop? Peter? Right, good point. In, for push, we need to say what are we going to push. But for pop, we don't need to say what we're popping, right? It's popping the last thing that is at the end. Um, it doesn't matter what it is, right? So again, for adding or pushing, we need to tell what to add, whether that is at the front or at the back. We need to, that, that kind of makes sense, right? Like we want to tell what we want to add to the array and we no, uh, don't necessarily care about what we are going to remove. We're going to remove from the end or at the beginning. Okay, one uh, technique to remember which one does what is the ones that are adding, the methods that are adding elements to the array at the end or at the beginning have a U in their name. So push adds to the end, unshift adds to the front. That is a, a a, a good technique that I really helped me remember because I was so lost when I first saw this for the first time. So the letter U in the name means, or you could just remember it to mean add. So pop, push, add to the end, unshift, add to the front. Okay, any questions so far? Thoughts? Michael? Right. Um, yes, there is um, there is one way in, we could, in which we can say remove the element at index 1. And we're going to get to that. Okay, so... Right, so you will first find what you want to remove, then take note of the index at which you found that, and then remove through the index. Yep. Yeah. What if there are 50 things, and you're not sure what number goes into the number, somehow a way of finding what number it is? Right, yes, there is a way. In, we saw loops before, right? So one technique, kind of going over real quick, is we can we can loop over the array for looking for that 
one thing that we know is somewhere in those 50 elements. Let's say it's um, cookies in our shopping list. We could loop over the array, and once we find cookies, uh, we will have the index at which cookies is, and then we can use that index to remove the elements. But before we get into that, um, let's look some other array methods. Or actually, let's see if I can give you an exercise where you do shift, push, pop, and shift. Okay, let's take five minutes to start, start with an empty array and add and remove things using the four methods, push, pop, shift, and unshift, so that you add, you can add more than five things, more than four things, but at the end, when a console log shopping list here, it should be, when a console log shopping list here, it should be empty. So, what do I mean by that? We have an array, and I want you to add to the front, and back stuff. Add stuff to the front and back. Remove stuff from the front. So that when we console log the last line, we console log the array, we should still see it empty as if nothing was there. But we actually, under the hood, uh, we kind of did put some stuff there and then we removed it. But at the end, it should be empty. OK, let's take five minutes to do that. Start with an empty array. Put as much stuff as you want. Make sure you remove it. And you have to use the four methods that we just saw. Push, pop, unshift, shift. Take four minutes for that.
Who needs more time? Okay, let's do a minute and a half more. Those of you that are done, uh, let's share it on Slack so that we can see, we can all see what, what you guys came up with. Okay, let's see what um, Addie came up with. So she has a variable for animals, which starts as an empty array. Uh, then she adds alpaca, goat, chicken, um, and at the end, then she adds llama at the beginning. Um, so she added how many things? One, two, three, four. Now she removes from the end one she removes from the back no, she removes from the beginning two she removes from the end again three she removes from the front or the beginning again four um Ari's array should be empty do we all trust that let's run it so that javascript is the one that says whether it's true or not. Right. Oh, and it's nice that we can we can kind of see uh, because she counts a log after every step. Um, we can see how at the beginning is empty. Then we push. She pushed three things. And we console log, we see that it has three things inside. After that, um, she adds llama at the beginning. Now we see it here. After that, she does pop. Um, then we see that chicken is no longer here, right? And so on and so forth. Cool. Let's see one more.
See, Douglas, um, let's see, um, Douglas adds TV shows, Gravity Falls, Amphibia, Wonder Over Yonder, Future Warm. And then that is being added to the end or the beginning? The end, right. And then we add the Owl House and Infinite Train. Where do we add those to? This should be. At the beginning, right? And then, so he added one, two, three, four, five, six things, and he pops from the back one, two, three, four, and then he removes from the front two more times for a total of six. So let's run this. Right, we still see it empty. Any questions so far? It doesn't matter the order, as we saw. Um, Aries had different order. Yeah, the, the order didn't matter. Did you? Okay. This one? Right, so just like push, we could add multiple stuff at the beginning. Is that what you're saying? Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, that, that's a good question. If if we add these two at the beginning, what will be the index of the owl house be? Let's verify that. Good point. The owl house is first. So that's that's good. I. I didn't remember this, which is unshift will respect the order in which you pass them. So it's gonna add, it's gonna add, first it's gonna add infinity train, and then after it added that, it's gonna add the, uh, the owl house. Infinity train gets added first, and then- Yeah, because it's adding to the front, so infinity train is added first. After that, the owl house is added. Cool. Any questions, comments, concerns? No? Douglas? Why did it spit your ray out? Right, that is line breaks is like it's a good word. Um, it is I think it, it might be because of if it's too long to fit in one line. JavaScript will just break it so that it's more human readable. So, yeah. Uh, backslash n, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah, Sam? When I do this, So, the wait. I'm sorry. You said transferring. Um, I think it will it will work. Let's let's try. It. Let's see. Let's console log here. Let's console log shopping list, and let's console log array. So we're trying to see if there's any difference between these two. Oh. So apparently both of them give us the same thing. Um, one difference that we could note, or not difference, but we could kind of create a copy of shopping list, I believe, if we, instead of passing this hello here, I do shopping list. So it's gonna kind of it's gonna take this array and it's gonna create a new one out of that. And to be honest, I 
I'm not even sure if this will work. Let's see. Oh, we got something interesting. We got, this is before, this is after a change. So what's going on here, Michael? Um, Right, if I want it to be exactly the same, I could do something like R2 equal shopping list. But, and let's see, shopping list, let's console log R2, and let's console log R at the end. So actually, let me just move this now. Let's see the difference between these three. Hello. Hello. And then this one has double square brackets. And we're going to get to this, but what's going on here is we're, we're having an array inside another array. And that is perfectly fine. We could have, once we have arrays inside other arrays, we call them multi dimensional arrays. Um, or a matrix where we could uh, represent, um, we could use that to represent, for instance, we're building a board game, uh, a matrix or a two dimensional array could be, you could think of it as the chessboard where you have columns and rows. Um, and we're going to get to this. Okay. Yeah. Pearl. So, yeah, we're, we're going to get to this in a few minutes. So, okay, so let's move on to some other uh, array methods. Yep. Yeah. Right, a string within a string, you cannot have it in the same way as you can have arrays within arrays. And that that is... I think is the the thing is that it's it's kind of abstract because we could have a string like this, and you can see you can say that the string Alejo is within the string hello, right? But it's but it's not in the same way in which I could do shopping list. The, the plus will concatenate to the end. That could be considered end, yeah, because if it's at the end. So it is kind of a strike where I could say Alejo, the string Alejo is within the string hello Alejo. But we're going to get to how, how we can have strings or arrays within arrays. Okay, so. Um, I said that arrays have other methods that we could use to manipulate the content again. And one of them, um, as we saw earlier, arrays and strings are kind of similar. Um, so we saw on strings that we could do something like let string or str equal, let's say, hello world. Right? And then we could do something if we only want the second part or the second word, we could do console log str dot slice zero one two three four five. Let's run this. Wait, what before I run it, what is slice going to do? A little bit louder and raise your hand. Pearl? No, I oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody in the back? Sorry, you. Go to index five to the end and do what? And so sort of log index five to the end, right? Or in other words, in other words, make a copy of the string from index one, index five to the end. Do we all agree with that definition? 
let's see what it, let's see what happens. Right. So we're seeing index five here is actually this empty uh, or not empty but space. So we see it here. This is this little thing that we're seeing on the, on the left. So if I truly wanted the second word, I would do index six. Right. So that will be in a string. We could do the same with an array. How would I do that? Let's say we have the shopping list um, eggs, milk, rice. So with slice, I made a copy. starting at index six. How would, how would, how could we use slice with arrays? Sure. Splice? No, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for slice. So let's see what this gives us. Console.log shopping list dot slice two. So what am I saying with this line? Shopping list dot dot slice at index two. Peter? Uh, index. Right. Give me or make a copy starting from the second index and everything after. Let's try to run this. Right? We see this is index zero. X is at index zero. Milk is at index one. Rice is at index two. And then after index two, we have nothing. Therefore, we only see rice. How do we feel about this? Thumbs up, middle, or down? Cool. Um, so again, remember that very similar to arrays, to strings, I'm sorry. Arrays also have a, a slice method that allows you to make copies um, or slice the array uh, based on indices. What would this be? If you can give me an example where this could be useful. Where I wanna, yeah, like chop down the array for some reason. Lewis? Uh, well, if you want to split your shopping list in half, that's a great example if you want to um, split the shopping list into two pieces. Yeah? Right, so if you have, uh, let's say, a guest list and you want to take people off the list. Um, in this case, we could make a copy of the original list with, I don't know, let's say the last 10 guests. But we cannot really remove them yet because we're out, we're, Slice is only making a copy. Yep. Could you expand on that? Um, Right, like uh, that'll be sort of like taking days off the calendar, right? Cool. Yeah, those are good examples. And uh, well, I guess like going back to Hubel's example, we could make it work where we reassign the value. So, for instance, let's say let me show you first that slicing here doesn't modify the original array. So, if I do console log shopping list, shopping list has not changed, right? Shopping list is still the same. But if I want to remove, let's say I want to remove uh, eggs and milk, what I could do is redefine shopping list to be equal to the result of the slicing operation. So for doing that, 
Is everyone following along here? I'm kind of using a lot of jargon. So what I'm saying is, let's say we, in this case, we want to remove eggs and milk. So I don't want to use pop or I don't want to use uh, shift. So what I could do is redefine the value of shopping list. So I'm going to do shopping list. Okay, shopping list now be equal to the result of this operation. The result of this operation is a copy from shopping list started at index two, so this. Now, if we have this console log, this console log shopping list before that operation happens and after. Let's see. Right, so before our shopping list is just our shopping list, eggs, milk, and rice. We reassign the value of shopping list to be equal to the result of the slicing. And what is the slicing asking? Grab shopping list, make a copy starting from index two, right? Index two is rice. Uh, that copy that was made by the slice is saved into shopping list. And then now we console our shopping list and it turns out that Shop the shop, the value of shopping list change, right? Thumbs up if you follow along. Middle, down. Okay, thank you. So, okay, so we learned slice. Um, just like in strings, we could say slice from. Thank you. Uh huh. Right, so if I have something here like water, yeah. good, let's, let's try that. Right, so a slice is making a copy started at index two and everything thereafter. Yep, Pearl. Instead of does it change or does it modify it? Um, isn't it modifying if you're only taking two? In this case, it is yes. But when I had it, when I had just shopping list like here, in this case, slice. Oh wait, um, shopping slice. So shopping list that slice to is not touching the original array. It makes a copy. That's an important distinction. It's going in and it's making a copy starting from index two. So just as in strings, slice can have um, a start index, start from index six to let's say index seven for the word. Um, and then now that we added water to the end of our arrays, let's say we could do, actually let's see what this gives us first in the string. Right, so in here we're saying on line four, string that slice from index six up to and not including index seven. So that turns out to give us only the W, right? Because W on hello world is at index six, in the sixth index. And index seven will be the O, but we're not including the O, right? Slice has, this is the start and then the end. Similarly, that's, that's still a, a rule that applies for arrays. Let's say now we wanna do, instead of making a copy from rice and everything thereafter, I only wanna make a copy of the array that has or I, want, I only want to make a copy that has only rice in it. So how could I do that in here? John? Two here? That's it. Ooh. No, I have an empty. This give me an empty array. Why? Peter? 
Right. Uh huh. Let's look that up in the documentation. Right. They cancel each other out because I'm saying start at index two, but don't include index two. So if we look at that in here, um, let's see arrays. JavaScript array, uh, slice. And then, okay, so it says returns a selected element in the array as a new array. And then we can have here, this is, this is called the method signature. This is how, this kind of gives you an idea as to how this method is supposed to be invoked. So we have first the name of the array, slice, and then there's something called start and end. Those are called parameters. And those are explained down here. Start is optional. It has to be an integer that specifies where the selection or the copy will start. And then the end is optional as well. And it's an integer that specifies where to end the selection or where to end the copy. If omitted, all elements from the start position and to the end of the array will be selected. And then use negative values to select from the end of the array. Oh, it doesn't mention here that it's not going to be included. An integer. Right. So let's see when this one doesn't seem to be that helpful. We could go on MDM. Let's see, MDM array methods. Like this. Um, I'm looking for a slice. Um, returns a shallow copy or a portion of the array, kind of the same. Same. This is all meaning the same thing that we have been uh, saying in here, which is makes a copy, uh, selects from the array. Those are all interchangeable. Uh, let's see if this one says something. So here again, we have the signature. We have begin and then comma and end. End is optional, a zero based index before which to end the extractions. This one actually it says, it puts it in italics here, before which to end the extraction. So this is kind of telling us that it's not gonna be included. Slice extracts up to, but not including the end. That is something that we have to remember. Okay, so we saw slicing. Uh, we saw that also they cancel each other out here because we're saying make a copy from index two up to but not including index two, right? So let's see, let's change it to index three. Now we only have rice because we said start a copy from index two. This is index two up until in this index three, but don't include index three. Leave that one out. And now we got rice. Any questions, comments? Sorry, here. Um, okay, so what you're saying is that in, for strings we could do minus one. str that slice minus one, and that's gonna give us the last character in the string. So you're wondering if that still applies to arrays? I don't know, but we can find out. Let's put a negative minus one here. Does it work? It does work, right? Slice minus one gives us the last one. So we could use negative numbers if we want to kind of start from the from the end. And this kind of touches on, I think, Sharar, you said about what if we want the third to the last? Third to last, right? We could do minus three, or actually minus two, maybe. Yeah, minus three. Cool. Any other questions? Joanne?
What if we only had one element in our shopping list? Let's say we only have eggs. Okay. And then we do slice minus one. Uh huh. If I keep adding to the shopping list, um, I think I'm having difficulty understanding. Um, so let's see, let's put here juice. So you're asking what str dot slice minus one, no, shopping list dot slice minus one is gonna give us, or minus three, in this case, that's it. It gives us the last three, right? So now I let out milk. it will still keep doing the same thing. It will give you minus three, will give you the last three of that. Cool. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so we saw a slice, but what happens if we, a problem that we, that some of you might have encountered is, we know how to add to the end Add to the beginning, remove from the end, remove from the beginning. But I think I think Mike, you brought out the question of what if I want to remove from the middle or from anywhere else that's not the beginning or the end. Um, so JavaScript has another la uh, good little method for doing that. Um, that is called. Let me remove this so that it's. At least that we can all see in the screen. Uh, that method is called splice. So I could do something like shopping list dot splice, and then here we I have to provide the index that I want to remove. So let's say we want to remove milk from my shopping list. So what is the index at which milk is? It's one. Okay, let's see. Let's do let's do it just like that and let's console log our shopping list. Ooh. <laughs> what happened? Let's look let's console log before. Before we had an, our entire shopping list, I wanted to remove milk and I ended up only with eggs. Brianna? It removes index one and everything after. That's correct. So again, if we have doubts of, as to the behavior, we could go on W3Schools and look it up. Uh, that's Splice. Let's see what it says about Splice. The splice method adds slash removes items from to or from an array and returns the removed items. So it seems like splice can do two things that are kind of confusing. It can add, but it can also remove. So let's learn how to use it. So the signature says array that splice and then an index and then something called how many. And then after that, I could say item one, and I could go up to item X. Okay, I don't really know what that means. So let's let's read more. Index is required. It has to be an integer that specifies at what position to add or remove items. Use negative values to specify the position from the end of the array. That's good. How many? Optional. The number of items to be removed is if set to zero, no items will be removed. Okay, maybe this is something that we kind of missed. 
and then item one to item X. These are optional. The new items to be added to the array. So now with that information, how can I fix my code? I want to remove milk, only milk. Comma one, and that's what does this one mean? Not the end. Uh, I mean, right? You want to remove one element. That's what this one stands for. So let's let's do an experimentation with this. Right now, what do we see? Our shopping list without milk. So we said, go to index one, remove whatever is at index one, and then I want you to remove only one thing. It removed milk. What happens if I put two? Now I'm asking, remove two things, starting at index one. What is the result going to be? Pearl? Eggs and water. Thumbs up if you're with her. Good. Thumbs down if you're not with her. Good. Those are good classmates. Actually, wait. Where's the people who didn't do thumbs up or down? I'm really concerned about you. So let's see if Pearl was right. Eggs and water. Get up for Pearl. Cool. So again, we said remove from index one and remove two things, milk and rice. You see, eggs and water. Brand? Can I change the second number to zero? Let's see what's going to happen here. Oh. Right. Before we move on to that, um, if we remember clearly here, it said, how many is optional? The number of items to be removed. If set to zero, no items will be removed, right? So that makes sense that we put zero, and well, it removed zero items. It removed none. Char? Sure. Right here, I was here I was getting rid of two things, starting at index one. Right, let's see it again. We start eggs, milk, rice, and water. We end up we end up with eggs and water. We remove whatever is at index one, which is milk. Right, that's the first thing that we removed. We're removing two things. We remove milk, and then we remove rice. Two things. Cool. Pearl. Do you have to put zero? Um, no, we saw that if we put zero, nothing is removed. No, no, no. Um, Only one. Only one? Right, we did that. What did we get? Yeah. Brianna explained this, which is uh, it removes everything starting from index one. So it removed everything starting from index one. We only get X. Mike? So when you call the function, it will change the value. Right, good observation, yes. I think it's because I can't come out here. Basically, it's my forge put inside a custom object. And then, we basically have to look like you and like God, we're the same. We're the same? That's it. So you have one here and removing two items. Um, well, I just, did I just, it just didn't Let's see. So shopping list starts at eggs, milk, rice, and water. And then we see this other console log, which is what we removed. We removed milk and rice, and after that we get eggs and water. So this is something that I was forgetting to mention, which is 
shopping list that splice is going to give you back what was removed. So that is this line that we're seeing here. This console log, I could do for clarity, we could just do let remove equal to this. Then I can console log remove here. So shopping list that splice will return back to you what was removed. So let's see. We should still see the same thing. X meal, rice and water, removed milk and rice. What is left is eggs and water. Right. That's, there is no way uh, shopping list or the splice method in an array is modifying the original value. Um, if you compare that to slice, slice doesn't modify the original value. It makes a copy of it, and it gives you that copy. But slice, you have to be careful because slice can actually remove from the element, from the array, right? And that's actually what we want. We want to actually change the array. If we want to make a copy, we use slice instead. Any questions about that, Malik? Uh, and here, like negative one, let's see. Seems like we can. So here, what am I seeing? What am, what am I saying with splice minus one, comma two? Sorry? The position, right? So JavaScript says that if it sees a negative number, it's going to start from the end. So minus one will still will say remove water, right? And then after that, it's saying, OK, after water, remove. Um, once you remove water, remove something else, because we're asking you to remove two things. But there's nothing after water. So in this case, it's not moving forward, because we have eggs and eggs, milk, rice, and water. I want to say moving forward. I'm, I'm not saying, because when you said the negative one, uh -huh. knowing that it's going to pull, it's going to start at the end. Right. I was assuming it's going to take off water and then rice. Oh, uh, I see. Uh huh. But it's, but it will take off water and then it's something, uh, there's nothing else after water. Right, that's correct. If, if, if there was something after water, um, it will remove that thing too. Yeah, Hugo. Oh, Hugo is trying to break JavaScript. If you do minus one, minus two, let's see. Oh, remove now is empty. Now you're asking it to remove from the from water. And then remove two minus two things. <laughs> Let's see. Let's try with one. Let's try small. Oh, still same. Right. So none. In this case not even console. Like I could put four here, and it's still I'm still gonna get the same. Um, JavaScript will just ignore the negative one. Um, negative. Yeah, negative. The how many a negative number? And it's just going to give you an empty uh, array. So you can only have one. That's correct, right? Because it doesn't make sense. You want to remove minus two items. OK. Any questions before we move on? So slice is interesting. Yeah, do this. Um, so let's say you have an unknown amount of items uh huh. Uh, and you do want to do one of use slice to, to split it in half. Okay. But you, you don't have the precise number to get it to be like, you know, it's exactly 50 here, it's like 25. Okay. Or, um, can you use uh, a way dot line? Right, yes. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Or you could also have, you could also be counting, I want the first 10. 
and then you can have a loop that counts that gets to 10 and then after that then you do your splice after after that yeah um so okay the last thing that we haven't seen splice do is add a new thing um and which is let's do that so let's remove milk uh how many i want to remove i just want to remove milk so i'm just going to remove one instead of milk what should i buy juice let's see Eggs, we start eggs, milks, rice, water. We remove milk. Instead of milk, we plug in juice. So this went to index one, removed one element, and then added juice. What if I want cookies? Would this work? Now, before rice, it added juice and cookies still. How do we feel about splice? Oh, yeah, Hugo. Oh, because I want to remove from, starting from index one, and I only want to remove one thing. This is the second. That's what the second one means. I could remove rice, so rice is at index two. Remove rice and instead of rice, put juice. And right after juice, put cookies. Let's see. Right now, rice was here. Now, juice is there. Before water, also put cookies. Thumbs up if we feel good about splice. Here we go. No, because I want to start removing from index two, and I only, that's these two, start at index two, and I only want to remove one thing. I only want to remove whatever is at index two. If I want to remove two things, I will do this. But this is going to remove two things. So now, instead of rice and water, now I have juice and cookies at the end. Yep, perfect. So that means starting to remove two, add these two. That's correct. Yep, Douglas. If you want to put like juice as like swap out juice for milk and cookies for water. Like so so one like two comma one juice and uh I see like like four comma one cookies. Uh wait you're saying in the original rice milk rice and water, you want to replace milk and water with something else, right? I'll need to do that in, I think I'll need to do that in two separate lines. Mm -hmm. Because there is no way I could say, just leave rice. I'll, I'll need to kind of like put it here. Yeah. Wait, say that again. We want to remove, we want to change milk by juice and water by cookies. Yeah. So, um, so I guess um, first of all, okay. I want to remove one thing. Uh, no, I no, started at index one. And then how, how many things do I want to remove? Okay, uh-huh. And then next another screen. Or not a screen, but I'm going to shop in the next Oh, I see. Yeah, we could do this. So that, it's kind of confusing. Right, we replace milk with juice and water with cookies. But but if we think about it, if we want to do that, we could just do shopping list at index one, just put juice in there, and shopping list at index three, just put uh, 
cookies there. Yeah, Pearl. So your notes are adding you say two things, two words or strings after the numbers, correct? Say that again. You know that you're adding things if you see two things that you're adding. If you're not, if you don't see anything. Good observation. Yes, you know that you're adding stuff to the array if you see strings after the first two arguments. If you're doing just this, this is just removing sorted at index one. Remove three things. Right. Okay. Any other questions before we move, Peter? Oh, so if shopping list was not a shopping list, but an array of numbers. One, two, three. I believe so. Let's see. So remove, starting from index one, remove, let's see, let's remove one thing. And then let's add the number 100 and the number 200. Right, it added, it removed two. That's what we're seeing here. Instead, put 100 and then 200. Right, so to generalize what Perl was saying is, if you see more than two arguments, you are adding whatever is after those two arguments to it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, the dollar sign? Uh, the dollar sign? Uh, a string interpolation. Cupel. Uh, uh, here too? I'm, I'm confused. Like here, if I want to remove something from the second index, let's see. It just gets added. Okay, so we saw splice. That was one of the more interesting ones. Um, now, let's see a few other quick ones. Let's go back to our shopping list. Um, do we remember string concatenation where we could do the plus, right? And I, and I could say string hello plus world is going to join them. Um, well, I cannot use the plus with arrays, but um, I could use something else, which is, let's say, because, let's see, I'm doing shopping list plus hello. Let's see, actually, let's create a variable called result equal to shopping list plus hello. And then let's just do result. So let's see one more time what happens when we try to concatenate as an array with a string. What happened? Type of result is a string. Now we no longer have an array, right? So we could do that with strings, but if we want to do it with arrays, we could do something like string, let's create another list. This two is equal to, let's see, because we want to concatenate, we want to kind of add something that makes sense to our shopping list. Um, let's do cookies. And then, so for the result, we are going to do shopping list dot concat parenthesis list two. Oh, and we're going to see something else in a few minutes. So what I'm asking JavaScript to do here is 
join the array shopping list with array list two. Let's see what we have. Now we have eggs, milk, rice, water, and cookies. What does this look like? Right, these are these are all strings in inside array, inside one array, yes. But what kind of what like what did we do here with concat that we did with another method earlier? Right? We kinda added stuff. And uh, I guess we could say if we reverse this order here, at least two concat shopping list. Now we kind of have the opposite, right? So we could we could think that concat kind of helps us as push to us, right? Peter? Can I push the variable? Oh, let's see. That's a good example. Let's do result two. So what? Peter is suggesting is what happens if we do, let's do shopping list again here, this two here. And then what happens if we do shopping list dot push list two? What do we think is gonna happen? Let's see. Oh, I never comes to log a result too. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> what happened? Why am I why am I seeing five? Let's see this. Per. It's an array within an array. It's an array within an array. Great. Um, it's an array within an array that has a string. This one is an array. Yeah. So I'm guessing the method push returns the value at the same time we assign something to the. Right. That's close. It doesn't reassign it, it modifies the original. Yeah, so, it modifies it. The method itself returns value. Right, and this, all, this is all in the documentation. Somewhere somebody took note of this. There is nothing that we're writing here that is not written somewhere. So what Mike was saying is that push returns back to you or gives you back the index at which an element was added in the array. And just so that we see that, let's go on the push method. Um, we see, see the signature, item one, item two, see technical details. Technical details, return value. It returns a number representing, oh, actually the new length of the array. So I'm wrong, it's not gonna give you the last index, it's gonna give you the new length of the array. Yes, if you if you do get that push, get that push, <laughs> array that push, um, it's gonna give you the return value of that expression is the new length of the array. And it's gonna modify the original array by adding something to the end of the array. Right, okay, so we verified that. Let's go back. So in here we can see the true differences between concat and push, which is shopping list that concat list two is joining them into one list. This is that. But shopping list that push list two is adding the entire new list two array into the end of the shopping list. So if I have something like 
choose here. Now my shopping list has four elements, which are strings. And the last element is an array that inside has two other strings, cookies and juice. So this, we could say, these are nested arrays, arrays inside arrays, two-dimensional arrays. So the push gives you two arrays? Push, push, literally push whatever the argument that we pass inside the parentheses is to the end of the array. Yeah, but in this example, is that one is part of this push? This one? Yes. Yeah, this is push. And then, yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. OK, so we saw concat. Um, by the way, concat works in strings as well. Um, I could still do something like hello.concat world. And concat works in both arrays and strings. It's just that I could do it for strings. I could, instead of doing that concat, I could just do plus. OK, so let's see. Now we saw that when we tried to concatenate a string with an array, the string, the array was being um, converted to a string, right? So what happens if we actually want that? We intentionally want to convert an array to a string. Rene? Um, huh? OK, good question. Um, it came back 5 because result 2 is going to be equal to the returning value of this operation. And then we saw in the documentation that the return value of push is a number representing the new length of the array. So when I go here, shopping list push is going to give me back the new length of the array, of the array shopping list. Right? And then I'm console logging result two, that's five. Array had two. OK. So OK, I was saying that what happens if we intentionally want to convert an array to a string? Because maybe we want to, maybe we want to display them instead of this, let me remove this. Maybe instead of displaying them like this, this is, to be honest, this is not very human readable. Like, a regular human in, in the street is not going to know what this is, what this means, right? We know because we know JavaScript, right? We have a superpower. So what happens if I want to make this so that anybody can understand that this is a shopping list? Uh, what I can do is uh, to convert this array into a string, I could do shopping list dot join. And let's see what this gives us, first of all. Actually, let's do it. Let r to str. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to console log r to str. Let's see what this is going to give me. OK, now I got rid of the square brackets. I uh, still kept the commas and got rid of the, um, the quotes. So this is somehow, somehow a non-programmer could understand that this is a list that has eggs, milk, rice, and water. It's still not, still not quite there yet, right? So you see that here in join, I didn't pass any arguments to the join method. But let's go to the documentation. Let's find out what joins us. Join. Convert the elements of an array into a string. 
the join method returns the array as a string, the elements will be separated by a set specified separator. The default separator is a comma, okay? This method will not change the original array. So let's see the, the signature here. Array.join separator. I don't know what separator is. Let's see, separator, it's optional. The separator to be used. If omitted, the elements are separated with a comma. Oh, okay. Maybe I can try to do, oh, something like this, and let's try this. Join with end. Is right. Now we have something more naturally sound in English. Eggs and milk and rice and water. Right? Any questions so far? What happens if I want them on a separate line? Slash and break Camille. Now I want to join these elements in the array with the new line character. And that is going to give us a list. Say that again? A combination of both. So something like this. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> see. eggs and milk and and rice and and water. Maybe do you really remember? I think the loops lab said um, for the the ninety nine bottles. I think where if it was the last one you had to say, you had to change bottles to bottle. And here we could say something like, okay, separate by new lines and a comma. And if, oh, let's put the comma before the new line, right? And then we could say, if we were in a loop, which by the way, spoiler alert, join is under the hood is going in a loop, going on each one and adding a new line to every element. So if we, if we were to write jo that join ourselves, we'll need to be using a loop. And then if we do that, we could also make it so that at the end uh, or for the last element, it should say X comma new line milk comma new line rice and water. That is, if we were writing that join, our implementation of that join, which we could actually do. And I encourage you to um, research that. How could you write your own join? Mm -hmm. We can do that. Okay, so we saw join. Um, now, so since strings and uh, arrays are so similar, and we already learned how to convert an array from an array to a string. Turns out that the opposite is also possible, which is turning a string into an array. What benefits do we foresee that will give us? What was one of the benefits of uh, arrays as a whole or compared to strings? I think probably you mentioned it. Renee? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So what Renee is trying to say is the benefit of mutability that arrays gives us compared to strings, right? So we could, for instance. Uh, one of the exercises on the strings lab, which was capitalize the last letter, what we could do is uh, turn that string into an array, 
go in and change the last character and then turn the array back into a string. Actually, let's do that. So I think it was let name equal Jimmy. And it should give us Jimmy capital Y, right? So to demonstrate how, how can we turn name into an array, I'm going to say let name array equal Jimmy, or actually name, dot split. This one is one that strings have. Um, and then split similar to join accepts a separator. So I could include new lines to split in new lines, but I, I don't want to do that. I just want to split on every character. So let's do, before we move on, let's do console log name array. Um, let me just get rid of this. Let's see what we have. So again, name is the string, just Jimmy. And then name array, we're, na we're saying name that split, um, which is gonna turn name into an array and it's gonna save it into name array. We're gonna console log name array, so let's see. Ooh. We have an array with one string inside. Right, Vanille? Uh, where in line four? Quotes. Right. So, so if we don't include them, um, what is going to happen is let's see. It's just going to put it into an array. So we could use split also if we wanted to to convert one giant string into an array with one element, which is gonna be one string. But what we truly want is we want to separate every character to be one element in the array. So if we're doing that, we need a separator for our split. And I just want to separate on the empty string, meaning on every single character. That's it. What do we see now? What is name array? Right, it's an array with five elements where each element is a string and each element is one letter in the string Jimmy. Right, so now that we have that, we could do name array at the last index. How do we do the last index? Great, sure, thank you. Now, I want that to be capitalized. So actually, I don't need to do that. I just, I could just do, wait, could I do that? Oh. I'm gonna need to do, let's see if this works. To uppercase. Let's see name array after that. Okay, that didn't uppercase it. Right. Well, I am I am grabbing the last element in the array, which is the last y, and I'm uppercasing it. But the name array is not being changed; it's not being modified. Right. To do that, we could just do name array at name array dot length minus one. Is equal to name array at index name array dot length minus one to uppercase. Now with this, again, we are going into the array and modifying the element. We are saying whatever is the last element in this array, go and uppercase that same last element and replace it. So let's see it before and after. Oh wait.
Now we have before, lowercase y, after, uppercase y. Right, so the last thing that we need to do is to turn this array, name array, back into a string so that we're left with sort of the original. How do we do that? Join. Uh, more, I need more precise instructions. Who can give me those? Let's see, Peter. Name array dot join. Is it gonna work just like that? That's it. I'm still seeing the two arrays. Like I, I could redefine name array to be called name array dot join. But I don't want to change. Let's see, this will work. Oh, but with that caveat, how do we fix that? Char. Quotes in the join, join in empty string. We are back with Jimmy, capital Y at the end. But one last thing that I'll mention here is I don't want to change I don't want my variables in general to be changing the types. So if name array is to be an array, let's just have it be an array throughout. Uh, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to overwrite what name has. And here I'm just going to console name. Still the same. So this is another way in which we could have solved that exercise. It's just that at, the, at that time we didn't know about our arrays and we didn't know that we could turn them. Uh, to strings and and vice versa, strings to array. Right? right, you could do it for the last word. Yes, that's correct. Any questions so far here? Cool. Thumbs up if you feel good with joining and splitting. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, Thumbs in the middle if you feel like shaky a little bit. Okay, that's good, that's good. What about all the way down? <laughs> okay, thank you for your honesty. Um, okay, so one last thing. We, do have, we have an exit ticket um, that we're asking you to complete. Um, I realize that there is one exercise there that uh, uses two-dimensional arrays. So I'm just gonna demonstrate here how can we access uh, an element inside a two-dimensional array, which is, do we remember this example where we did shopping list that push, and then we had another array here, which was juice and cookies. So if we console log shopping list, we see me. Okay. So if we if we log shopping list, we have we have an array with how many elements? Let's console log length. Have an array with five elements, right? One, two, three, four, five. Right? It's just that the fifth element is an array on itself. Right? So let's do okay. Let's access the fifth element. Let's do array at index five. Sure, let's do this. Oh no. Shopping list. First, first we sh oh oh because I have this one. Oh, what happened? Oh, 
Right, that's, that's one good observation. It should be four. There is no index five. Five is the length of the array. Let's see. OK, so we have five elements in the array. Index four is this whole array element. That's why we see shopping list at index four. We see the array itself. So if I want to do, if I only want to display juice from the inner array, what I can do is keep adding square brackets and another index. So now I can do shopping list for zero. Let's see what that's going to give us. Only juice. Right? So to have it a little bit more clear, we could do something like let inner array equal shopping list at index four. And then here we could just say inner array at index zero. Let's see. Still, we still see the same thing, right? Because inner array is the array that is at shopping list index four. And then because inner array is indeed an inner array, we could say, get me the element at index zero of the inner array. The element at index zero of the inner array is just juice. Does this make sense? Right, so we could do it like this way, or we could just skip this line entirely. And we know that shopping list at index four, we know that shopping list at index four is the inner array. So we could just keep going from that to that inner array, then follow the first element of that inner array, or the element at index zero. So that in turn give us uh, juice. So again, uh, there was this one coding challenge that I had to complete for, actually it was, it was sort of a competition where we had, the challenge was, uh, you're colonizing Mars. Oh, sorry, Renee. Um, Wait, say that again. Uh huh. Zero four. You will do four one because the inner array has two elements. This one is at index zero. This one is only at index one. So let's see this. Now you get cookies. But something interesting that um, Renee was leading us to is if we do index zero here and then index one here. Like that. Let's see what we have. G. Why do we see G? Hugo. Right, because strings are kind of like an array. We could still access the element at a given index. And here, what we're saying is, what is shopping list at index zero? Eggs, right? Now, what is eggs at index one? G, right? So we're selecting this one. Mm -hmm. Four, zero, one. What are we going to see? You, right? Because shopping list at index four is this array. This array at index zero is juice. The string juice at index one is you. Congratulations. You now know arrays. So please take uh, please take around ten minutes to complete the 
Actually, ticket. Oh, that's my fault. Maybe, oh, maybe I didn't put in the right date. You don't see this one? Oh, that makes sense. Now, refresh your calendar and you should see it. Yes, that's correct. And then tomorrow, we're just going to be practicing uh, the arrays that we saw today so that we, that knowledge actually cements. This requires practice. Again, after you're done, you can leave. Um, we're going to be working on the lab tomorrow for the three hours. You can get started if you want tonight. Um, if you have any questions, I'm going to be here. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much.
always commit them. So I'm preparing them right now by giving feedback on them. So make sure you do that. And if you have any problems or uh, questions about the loops, uh, make sure that you let me know. We'll sign up all these hours. Uh,